I, I do a lot of direct mail. So okay, but I do it a little bit differently. This yep. is going to be more of a Thai thing for sure. But uh, I don't even call them. Wow. I don't even call them. Not one so, time. So you do direct mail. Yep. Which is a great lease source, by the way. Like they flip and walked it to they they filled it out. They filled it out. They yeah. signed it and they walked it to the mailbox. Yes, sir. And they opened it and put it in it and walked back inside. It may have been twelve degrees, negative forty two or seventy three. They took it to the mailbox, unless they're like at one of those old houses where it's like right by the right, right by the door, door or something. But yeah, but uh, they did all that, so all I had to do was just walk to the doorstep and knock on the door. You know, wow. that's the goal. Um, so you did a lot of that. Well, yeah. When you said drive, there's a lot of driving yeah. for sure. <laughs> but knowing that um, in my mind that I've got like a 75% close rate because I've done the number. Sure. If I step through the door, I have a 75% close rate. Wow. In the door. So if I've got 10 leads and yes. I get into five doors, I know I'm going to close three to four that day. That's for awesome. me, that's worth it because that's your renewal. That's your yeah. client for, you know, and if you do a j good job on the back end, you're keeping that for the future. How are you not so. getting a return on investment if that's the case too? You oh, you, oh, I'm, it, it is for me. It is a return on the investment. Yeah. I mean, that's every month has been direct mail for a long time. So that's killer. That's a gold nugget. Okay. For those who are always wondering like, dude, what's a, what's a, what's a young killer doing and young, how old are you? Uh, 21. And freaking 21, yeah. dude, sounds like he's 51 already. Okay, well, he's dropping bombs. Go. Welcome back for the second ever rising star podcast this is a new podcast again focusing on people that are up and coming in the industry they're doing something special or maybe they're not right they just want to learn they just want to get better i can tell you the person sitting across from me is doing something special in the industry okay this is live every friday 8 a.m central center time welcome back for episode two of rising star podcast today we have mr zeb zen yes sir zz top yeah if you will dude what's up zeb i'm doing good how are you doing i am great brother appreciate you being on this thing okay zeb i've known for Dude, how long have we known each other, by the way? Um, I mean, it's been probably ever since I was 14, 15, high school. Seven, eight years? Yeah, it's been a while. Ish? Six, seven, watched, eight years? I watched you guys in college. So, yeah. yeah. Maybe in high school. Maybe, maybe high school, too, then. Once or twice. Yeah, yeah. Once or okay, twice. Okay, so, so Zeb is also from uh, Norwood area. Yes, sir. Okay, out, out east of Springfield. He's been in the business since, what, what did you say, August? Yeah, Of 2020? August. Yeah. It's about a year and four months yeah it's about a year and a half it's been okay. about a year and a half which is awesome um how's the experience been so far uh up and down but so yep. far it's been good good it's got its ups to it for sure no doubt well he what's funny is he says it's got its ups and downs but like he told me how many apps he wrote in 2021 his first full year by the way okay stay tuned because this is a crazy number we're gonna walk through and dissect this too because i want people to learn from this story this dude's not a power player yet but man he's well on his way though not yet but that is right? the goal yes um how many apps did you write in 2021 um 376 376 okay let's let's stop and do some math on this by the way okay let me check this thing out actually we just had someone sign up for rising star as we're doing this by the way dylan so um i may even just like stop and welcome that new member and that's really why we're doing this right um i think it's deshaun bryant okay we want we want we want to we want nice. to get more people a part of rising star we're growing this thing rising star is something where we're spending time with a coach and a mentor and a co-host every live every monday if you want information about that, Zeb's in it, CodyAskins.com forward slash Rising Star. Okay, let's do some math. Okay, 376 apps all of last year. That's 31 and a third a month. That's, a, yeah, that'd be about right. With probably more in AEP. A lot more. Naturally. Yeah. Um, what would you say you do per month outside of AEP? I was averaging about 20 to 25 outside of AEP. 20 to 20. So that's about one a day. Yeah. Or one and a quarter a day. Uh, which is per business day, which is pretty incredible, by the way. Like I told, I told Zeb, I don't, I don't think we realize this. People are listening to Rising Star. Most people in the insurance industry do not hit a hundred apps in a year. Yeah, that's you three point seven x them, bro. That's right? just yeah. That's that's a mentor. I mean, everybody needs a mentor. So, so. talk through that because that's really important, by the way. I mean, walking into walking through everything, I got started because your good friend, um, someone you've been in the business with a long time, Ty, yes, Ty James. That's right. He brought me on, he and his brother on. So right at the same time. Yeah. So me and Sid, and then um, that's yeah, a coach, a friend, and a mentor. And that's probably why everything is 
so wow. high right now. If yeah. I was doing it on my own, I'm not hitting 100 apps for sure. Wow. For sure. You heard it here first. Okay. Someone did 376 apps last year, 230 clients that are renewal clients, by the way. Yeah. Um, says, dude, I would have done a th fourth to a third. Probably. Of what I did if I didn't have someone help me. Yeah. And also, what do you think about those people out there around the country that are, that are, they think they have what it takes. Right. Maybe they're going to join Rising Star or whatever, but maybe they don't have someone, maybe they're alone. They don't have someone like in their office in Marshall, Missouri. Right. Help, help them every day. For those that haven't caught on, like Zeb's a part of Secure Insurance Group um, and is, is really an up and coming star for sure. Um, what do you think about someone that's out there? I mean, that's kind of why we started Rising Star, so we can kind of be a big brother or a big sister, if you will, or like Uncle Cody, whatever, right? With these other right, co hosts right. for people around the industry around the world maybe we have someone in london in rising star that's crazy um what's your thoughts on that because you obviously did have a leg up in that respect yeah definitely it's been a blessing more than anything you know yeah. uh god's watching out for sure no doubt but um i would say if you don't have a mentor or don't have a coach you're yeah. you're missing out and that's coming from straight from coach bert i mean yes. that guy's like another mentor of mine for sure but going into everything as I started out is just everything, the training to buy the leads, where to buy the leads, yes. what you're going to do with the leads when they come in, you know, how you need to schedule out your day, your week, your month, you know, the numbers that you need to hit certain goals. Yes. That's all coming from someone else say, you know, standing on the shoulders of other giants, you know, as mm. you would say, That's good. but, uh, they've already done it. They've already made the mistakes and, uh, being able yes. to just kind of take that leg up has definitely helped me. But uh, I knew I had what it took took to do it. I knew I had the motivation that to do it, and I'm not gonna I'm not a quitter, as you know already. Yeah. But uh, yeah. for sure, just I knew I had the motivation not to quit. Yep. And all I needed was basically the guy like, "This is how you do everything. This is what you need to do." I'm like, "Okay, I'll go. I'll go get it done." Yes. So that's um, basically how it's ended up. You he just dropped a bunch of gold. By the way, I hope you're taking notes as you're listening to the Rising Star podcast. Uh, one of the things you just said is, like, if you think about it, like 376 clients, 376 apps, you've got to have a lot of, um, drive. You'd be very competitive. Um, and he's smirking cause he is, uh, well, if you play basketball with him. Trust me. He is. Man. No, I'm okay. smirking. Cause as soon as you said drive, I was just thinking about like, I, I do a lot of direct mail. So, okay. but I do it a little bit differently. This yep. is going to be more of a tie thing for sure. But, uh, I don't even call him. Wow. I don't even call him. Not one so, time. So you do direct mail. Yep. Which is a great lead source, by the way. Like they've flipped and walked it to, they they filled it out. They filled it out. They Yo. signed it and they walked it to the mailbox. Yes, sir. And they opened it and put it in it and walked back inside. It may have been 12 degrees, negative 42 or 73. They took it to the mailbox. Unless they're like at one of those old houses where it's like right by the right, right by the door, door or something. But, uh, but uh, they did all that. So all I had to do was just walk to the doorstep and knock on the door. You know, wow. that's the goal. Um, so you but did a lot of that. Well, yeah. When you said drive, there was a lot of driving yeah. for sure. <laughs> but knowing that um, in my mind that I've got like a 75% close rate because I've done the number. Sure. If I step through the door, I have a 75% close rate. Wow. In the door. So if I've got 10 leads and yes. I get into five doors, I know I'm going to close three to four that day. That's for awesome. me, that's worth it because that's your renewal. That's your yeah. client for, you know, and if you do a j good job on the back end, you're keeping that for the future. How are you not so. getting a return on investment if that's the case too? You oh, you, oh, I'm, it, it is for me. It is a return on the investment. Yeah. I mean, that's every month it's been direct mail for a long time. So that's killer. That's a gold nugget. Okay. For those who are always wondering like, dude, what's a, what's a, what's a young killer doing and young, how old are you? Uh, 21. And freaking 21, yeah. dude, sounds like he's 51 already. Okay. Well, he's dropping bombs. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. Uh, and what? he's super humble, by the way, too. I'm going to just keep pumping him up and he's going to be like, stop. stop yeah. Okay. I don't need it. I've I'm, I'm been super blessed for sure. Yeah. Before. No doubt. Um, but that's, that was the, that's the whole deal. Now that's yes. where my up and downs do come from is yep. you're your own boss. So you got to get out of bed. Yes. You know, you got to talk, talk through that. Like how hard was that initially as, a, as, as when you first got in the business? How did that change? I also, how did your upbringing affect that? That, that I, I do have another leg up when it comes to that. I had a really good upbringing, you know, uh, mom and dad. My dad owns a construction company around this area. Yes. So every summer since I was probably 13, 14, I was already wow. working, you know, in construction. And plus I was homeschooled on top of that. So Dang. whenever I got to 17, 18, you're doing like two days of school, you're doing three days of work. So I, I was already adapted to, you know, you're going to work. You're yep. going to have to work these certain days and everything like that. But uh, that's why I love this in industry, though, is you're your own boss and the sky's the limit on what you can make. 
So true. I was used to a salary, an hourly wage, mm. and uh, this like that reformats everything in your brain. So I definitely yeah. had a leg up. Parents, you know, godly upbringing, church every Sunday, yep. which I'm super thankful for. Um, so that did give me a leg up again because there's lots of people out there like myself who might be my age but might not have the same upbringing as me. Yeah. So. so obviously the work ethic was instilled. Yeah. You saw that. Yeah, for right? sure. Like your 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 parents do work very hard. Um, what about the, the, like, did you see yourself putting in and doing this well and making this kind of money when you were 21? Let's back up. Like, say you're 16, five years ago. What were you thinking then? Dude, I had, I was, uh, you be, I'll be straight up honest with you. I was trying to figure out how to get varsity on basketball. Like that yeah. was my main goal. Yeah. Um, so I was in the gym practicing all the time for that. So there's always been. And you're better now than you were then. Oh yeah. A lot better. I, I trained, I worked out. So every, everything I do, I always wanted to be good at it, I guess. Yep. Which is probably, that's part of my upbringing as well. That comes from my dad. If you, if you met him, you would know, but, yeah, uh, for sure. so like I trained, I did basketball all through. So everything, just when it comes to insurance, you can kind of adapt that to this. You're doing the training, you pay for the trainings, just yes. like in high school, you pay, you pay for a trainer. Um, but, uh, you can, you can apply that however you want to. But Strong. that was my main goal back then. And I think it was like uh, my main, I was trying to go to college. Mm -hmm. That did not, it just didn't end up working out, which I'm thankful for now. Yeah. And then around that time, I was like, I don't want to do construction for the rest of my life just yes. because tore up my dad's body, tore up the people he worked with. I've been around most of my life, uh, his workers' bodies. You know, I'm like, I don't, yeah. I don't want that, you know? Yeah. And this thing came out of the blue. So honestly, wow. told, what did was not. your first thought when Ty approached you about this? I was like, or did you approach him? No, he approached me. He okay. approached me. Uh, he knew I was kind of like not happy where I was at. Um, okay. And I was like just searching, like, what am I going to do? And he just presented a job opportunity. And I'll be honest with you straight up. I told him, what's the catch? Because he's doing all yeah. these numbers and everything. He's freaking rain man. He's yeah. always doing numbers. He's, he's, like a, he's, like he's a human the, calculator. Yes, he is the numbers guy. So he's texting me like all these different numbers, breaking them down and everything. And I'm just like, dude, what what is the catch here? And he's like, yeah, there's not a catch. The catch, like basically, the catch is if you actually work, like you're gonna have to do this to to it's get true. this. And I was like. Well, I can, I think I can work. I mean, I think I can yeah. do it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's how, that's how that kind of came about and started. But seeing where I am now, no, I would, I would not have yeah. guessed at all. So. I didn't, I didn't give you a lot of credit either early on, to be honest. Um, you proved me wrong in a huge way, but I'm like, is that really going to work out? You know, yeah. like, what well, does he know about this? You know, but dude, absolutely who cares? Absolutely nothing. Yeah. yeah who absolutely cares what nothing. somebody knows, you know? And that's, a, you're a good example that when people are building teams and they're looking for rising stars, like, don't judge a book by its cover, man. Like, don't just think, oh, this dude's like 20, you know, he's 19. He's like, he's never, never, he not, I mean, he's, he's, you know, doing construction or he's never done business right. or he's never done sales. Like, I've never seen him work. He's always playing basketball. You know what I mean? Like, people can, can build right. cases in their mind, but it comes down to the person, right? And their heart. Yeah, that was that was my main deal. Um, I would tell you the the low I said up and downs at the very beginning kind of made you know I was like uh, but the down of that was uh, I spent all my savings in my first AEP. Wow, which is a personal twenty twenty. Yep, twenty twenty. Okay, so let's talk through that. So going into it, I mean, I'll be honest, I wasn't like right out the gate getting like twenty thirty sales a month. Um, I started in like August. I didn't get my first sale until like the end of September. Okay. On one sale. Wow. Uh, Why did it take so long? J I was calling life leads. I was doing this or that. Um, yep. Warm market, really. I think my first sale was like one of my family members or something. Dude, life is tough, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and it was and it was life. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I don't know if life is for me. And I've got there's a guy at our office right Not now. Not life in general, okay? Life insurance, right? Life insurance, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, for sure. But there's a guy at our office right now who's killing it in the life game. You've met him, um, but he's killing it. Yeah, and he's like, dude. He's like, life is my niche. Life insurance like is my life niche. Apps, Twenty thirty life apps last month. Yeah, in December. I'm like, dude, and he did his payroll, yeah. and he's like, you know, ten at ten k right now in commissions. Yeah. I'm like, bro, if you're making if you're making that your first month, you should stick with it. I was not totally, doing that at totally. all. So uh, that's where I got into like the med. I'm doing a lot of Medicare. So that's where I got into yeah. like the Medicare field, health insurance field. Yep. I was like, I, I could build this up, renewals, Correct. stuff like that. Um, but uh, so September, into September, I got my first sale, you know, then you go into what is next, October? Yeah. September, October. Yeah. So you're starting out like almost an AAP. Yes. And um, 
I was like, okay, I'm going to have to do something here to make some money. Uh, I would, so what I had done in my head was to be successful, I got to put the pressure on myself, mm. uh, which actually came from me watching one of your YouTube videos from like, what, two years ago now? Probably. So uh, I moved out. I got an apartment. Wow. And I ended up buying a car. That's a lot no of, money. That's that's but I ne- and I never paid any monthly bills before that, which yes, uh, I yes. was just twenty. So sure. But um, so I did all that, and I was like, all right, make do Makes or die. You grow up, doesn't yes, it? Yes, yes. I was like, all right, do or die time. So that was wow. where the mindset came from. And then I think I cranked out like I did like fifty or sixty apps, Medicare apps and AAP, and I ended with like almost a hundred apps and AAP. That's um, awesome. first AP ever. Yeah, first with like and and t- no, took a month, and no a month ex- and a half. To yeah, no was experience. a freak you were doing. Yeah, it was it you was know? that was tough, but that Crazy. drained the account for sure. And then January hit, and I I survived. So let's talk through that. Other people are scared to invest in their business themselves, or even just personally. Right, apartment, car, bills, whatever. Right, talk through that piece of like, dude, you you have to. You start to really pay attention when you start investing in you. When you start to pay, you pay yeah, to pay attention, and you paid for you pay to go to conferences now. Like I I've do. seen you go to multiple conferences last year. Yeah, yeah. That I I could see the uh, just the side effect of what happened. So yep. which was positive. You, you won a ticket to eight percent. I did win the ticket to eight percent. You, you uh, how was that by the way? That was that was great. That okay. was absolutely cool. awesome. Yeah, you turn I turn around and you know that probably. Had me fueled up for AEP for sure this year. Good. Which I and then you paid to go to SWAT. Twice. I believe. Twice. Yeah. Yeah. Which is cool. Like, those dude's are serious. Yeah. Those are worth it. Those are worth it for sure. Yeah. But yeah, SWAT uh, definitely gave me a new outlook. And that's where I was like, I, you know, I, if you weren't giving me a ticket, I was paying for 8% yes. after SWAT. You know, that totally yeah. changed your mindset on everything. Wow. In life. Yeah. Uh, and be frank, we didn't just give it to him. He earned it. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah it was uh, It was. I'm thinking I'm going to just give you guys a ticket. Okay? Right. You got to freaking earn that thing. It was earned through sales, th- yeah. through sales competitions. Correct. Through, this, yeah. through the SIG, which SIG's great about that. So Phenomenal. Um, but that is, you do have to pay to pay attention, which I think you say that a lot. Nate says that a lot. What, what do you so. think, though, when you're growing up and you're 20 and you're 19 and you hear that? Does it sound... It sounds a little bit cliche, like someone's trying to sell it to you at first. Totally. I mean, I'll just be straight up honest with yes, you. Like, please, okay, please. you're trying to sell something to me for sure. Um, but when Nate starts speaking on it, you know, he goes a little bit more in depth with it. And yeah. I was like, everything he's saying is like, that is like, I could, that's true. You know, yes. um, you're only going to pay, you pay to pay attention. You know, you're not, you're going to sit in the back with your arms crossed. Why does it work? Why does it make you pay attention more? I mean, cause it, I mean, that's out of your pocket, I guess, you know, yeah. that's my, my so take it more serious naturally, I, I guess. Yeah. My thought would be, you're just, you're just doing it. Um, but I've always paid for it. So I really Didn't don't, you already pre buy a fire ticket too. I did. I had pre bought <laughs> a fire a year ticket in advance. Yeah. For eight percent nation. Yeah. So I, it, I, I won the fire ticket. I pre bought VIP. That's what it was. Okay. Okay. Um, cool. Cool. that's what it was on that. Good. So I will say like, I haven't really not paid to go to an event really. Yep. So I don't know the other side of that, but I do know when you pay, yeah, I am sitting there and I am paying yes. attention. Again, the, I'm That's trying good. to get the gold nuggets that are there and there yes. always is one or two. Yes. So, for also, sure. um, you get a little bit of a marketing allowance with what you do. We do. But you are, do you ever invest and spend money out of the, additionally? Own, yeah. Out of your own so pocket? I will say when it comes like when you differentiate your money versus uh, let's say marketing money through yeah. like SIG yeah. in our LOA program, um, definitely when you spend $30 per direct mail lead, you are definitely, you, if you don't knock the door three times, you're crazy. If you don't call them 26 times until they, till it's a, what Ty would say, I'm going to, yeah. I'll, I'll touch back on him a lot probably as my For mentor, sure. Totally. but always make sure it's green or red. So I will, I'm going to drop some, like, that is a gold nugget for sure for me. Um, n- the gray area. Mm. not leaving your leads in a gray area. Yeah. You don't know if that was a, you don't know That's if that good. was a sell or if that was a hard no. So I don't even care if uh, they're slamming the door in my face. They're telling me no, or they're cussing you out or whatever. Yeah. Um, That's a red. And then you put it in the red category and you move on to the next gray and try to make it a green or a red, mm. you know, and that helps you not get discouraged. That was my biggest thing. That's actually really good advice. Yeah. Ty James. Yeah. I, 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 that is probably one of the biggest gold nuggets he's ever given me. So. Wow. I love that. I hope. Yeah. I hope someone can use, take and use that because it helps you not get discouraged because yes. I've direct mail. Like I said, I do a lot of direct mail. 
Um, and you got two or three bad days in a row, and that does come down to it's a little bit harder to get out of bed, Correct. right? Correct. So, Correct. Um, just making it helps you not get discouraged. You're like, okay, it's a red, it's yes. or a green. What do you think when you have those bad days, two or three days in a row, and you're thinking, okay, I need to, I gotta, I gotta, I don't know, man, I want to quit. Right now or in the beginning, because now I have a totally different. In the beginning. In the beginning. Um, it was hard, you know, I was complaining a little bit and, you know, uh, no, he, not Zepsan. Yeah. No way, I, I was complaining no just a little bit and he was, and Ty was like, dude, you gotta, you gotta start doing the numbers, you know? And then I, now I'm a numbers guy. If I'm hitting, like I told you, if I'm hitting 10 yes. doors, I know my ratio on what the close is going to be. If I, my foot steps through the threshold of that door. Wow. What you do know? you do to step through the door? Um, I'm just telling, I, when I'll, when I do with direct mail is I'll print off the lead card that they sent in, I'll go to the door and then you've got their handwriting, their address, their phone number. If they put it on their signature, if they sign it, you know, yes. um, and you're right there at their doorstep and you're like, Hey, it looks like you filled this out. I, you know, I'm, and I always just give them a little kind of just keep it light. I'm just like, Hey, I'm the guy that they pick on to send out here to, you know, see what's going on, see if I can help you, that type of thing. Good. I make it light, make them Good. laugh a little bit. And then uh, they'll say, yeah, I sent that in for such and such a reason. I'm like, okay, well, do you have a few minutes where we can talk about it and, and help, help me diagnose what your problem is and see if I can help you out? So we're not talking about what Good. I do yet or anything. We're just trying to diagnose their problem, get in the door. And then when you're in the door in the house, I'm letting them talk and figuring out the problem yeah. and then how it can solve on the back. How end. hard is it to really take a card, go knock on a door and say what you just said? I mean, to me, it's super easy. You know, in the yeah. beginning, I'm ner in the beginning, I was nervous for sure. Yes. Um, but once you get two houses down, like out of the way in the first, you know, eight hours, you still get nervous day, for the first house of the day. Um, not anymore. Yeah. But once, but when I started the first two or three hours of the day, um, going out there doing that you just after the first two you you kind of get in a rhythm kind of yep. get going i'll notice if i take like a like after ap i'm doing a lot of referrals during ap and and a little bit of, i mix in the direct mail in there with it yep and i mix in i've got dif different things i'm doing but uh when you get back to like oep or like right now or throughout the year um yes you you got to get back into the groove of being a door knock door to door kind of kind of guy yep. so it does take a little, it takes a couple, but I'm not nervous really anymore, good. but it, you get in the flow. Yeah. Um, what's your activity look like? How many doors a day, a week? Like what's your schedule? If I'm going out for the day, um, I want it to be a full day. You know, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but you did a great podcast with, um, I'm trying to think of his name. He's, he's teamed up with Roger Short right now to do some, some events, man. I can't think of his name, but he's a big annuity guy, big annuity guy. But anyways, hmm. he uh, he had something. Boy, what is his name? I'm trying to think of it right now. Tracy? Not Tracy, no. Uh, bald on top, bald on top. He was in the office here. Ooh. Gosh, we got too many bald people walking around. Yeah, I, I guess. guess so. Too many. <laughs> we got too many of them guys walking around here. But uh, he's a big – he does that, but he's big on numbers and everything. So I listen okay. to his podcast, and he knows how many calls it takes for him to get, how many doors he needs to get, and then how many he's going to get when he gets in the home. Yes. And he breaks everything down like that. And I just took what I could. That's a gold nugget for me right there. Yeah. So I took what I could from what uh, I learned from Ty, learned from him, and then doing was that. Was it John Wetmore? It was. That was it. John Wetmore. Oh, I Shout out. I see. It was bald on top a little bit. But yeah, so. shout out to Sorry him. Sorry if you're not. Okay, we love you either way. <laughs> but uh, big shout out to him. But we're not he, taking it out though. This is live. Okay, we're not editing this yeah. thing. Yeah, he, he says um, if you're not if so he says if you're not working like a whole like hourly day like eight hours in the day yep. then it's not your full time job it's your part time job and yes. you need, and you need to go get a full time. Yeah, job. I did. We did. I did a bunch of really good interviews with him. That yes. Makes sense. Yeah, and he dropped that, and I'm like, dude, that's so good. So touching ba back to what you said, what does the day look like activity yep. wise? Dude, I took that from him. I'm like, how many can you hit in eight hours, bro? I'm trying to hit like at least 20 to 20 doors. Yeah. You know, I mean, that t might t be, I always had success when he door knocked, even when he was just door knocking T65, when he hit 25, mm -hmm. it was like this magic number of dude, I made a sell, maybe not then, but I always made a sell from that block. Yeah. Yeah. And when you're doing LIS, um, I do a lot of LIS and I will be mixing a lot more T65 this year, mm -hmm. but LIS, I'm looking for like five out of that. 20 to 25 doors. I'm looking for five, you know, and that's, that's ROI for me. Good. So, um, that's my goal. And then that's going to be like 
you know, you got to factor in your map questing everything out and everything like that. So it's normally going to be like four to five hours on the road. And then you're hoping to get, you know, you're not going to hit all of them. So I always just grab 20 and just go, you know, Boom. and you're just hitting as many doors as you can while you're out there. Smart. Um, yeah. If they're gray, you're just going back. Yes. You're going back the next day. What's well, something you're doing from a cross selling standpoint? Um, that's, I, you know, I, I did, I did like, or, or I'm sensing some, um, I, improvement there. I have improved there. I would say that. Yeah. I would, I would definitely say that. I don't okay. know how I got that one, of, uh, at our, our little deal. I got like cross sell, like champ or whatever. And I, yeah. I honestly, I, I sat there, I was like, what? <laughs> so it yeah. kind of just happened on that. But, um, I think it's lately been happening more. It's what's a, what's a something specific that you're doing that others can use and learn from. One thing is, uh, I know Secure does a lot of is our little sheet that we have, which it's pretty easy. You, you can watch like use that? two YouTube videos with your dad and he's going to be on that. And yes, I do still use that. So cool. using that to say, you know, we're going to handle these other products. Now, if I'm sitting down with a T65, anything, hospital demi plan for sure. Yeah. In our area, we do a lot of Medicare Advantage plans just because they're competitive. Obviously, as brokers, I, I'm always doing suggesting both yes. med sub or, or MAPD, but we got a lot just because the, the uh, Marshfield is a, that area. Yep. And you're just basically, I'm not, I, I will say I'm not, they're not, not knowing about a hospital indemnity plan by the time I'm done with yes. that dental coverage. They only have a thousand. So you're, you're harping on that. You're, you know, so we might do a dental plan with that too. Um, and they're, and you're talking in a bundle standpoint. So we're going to do all this for under hundred dollars, gotcha. right? Even though it's MAPD. Yes. But so you could put ancillary products like cancer and different things on that too. Okay. Um, so you can just run through that with them. That's yep. what I would say. And I've done that. And if you go through all of it, cancer, long, long-term care, all of it, whatever, and they want hospital dental and this, mm -hmm. then you just did three more than not talking about anything at all. So true. I would True. say that has been something I've been growing on. What sure. do you think is the biggest area of improvement for your business in 2022? Uh, I've got some goals. I've definitely okay. got some goals. Building growth is my my biggest area of improvement is going to be growth and consistency. Business growth, personal growth. Business growth. Okay. When you say business growth, help me break that down. What are you, are you saying like That's sell what, more? Or are you saying like... So you got what you did this year. I'm trying to at least, you know, match that or do like a hundred more clients, you know, um, obviously my goal in my mind is to double it. And then if I don't double it, you fall short and you're, you do whatever you need so to do. So client wise, you had 230. Mm -hmm. So you're looking for 460. Exactly. New clients. Yes. Wow. So, and what do you, what do you think you gotta do to do that? Obviously you gotta sell a lot, but that's, you got my goal, I would say for next year is about 250 clients. That is the goal. 250 new clients? Yes. Okay. Because what that would do. Because then you also got to service the 230 you have. Yes. What that would do is put you at, if you do the math on that, you're kind of, you're getting close to making around six figures in renewals. So, and then yep. uh, my second goal is looking at other agency little blocks, maybe yeah. like that. And then um, building it, starting to build a team in 2022. Boom. So the team, I'm, I will be looking. I'm on the lookout for some rising stars myself. Yes. Um, because the team is, I want to build the team. That's gonna be the goal. That's huge, man. And, and that's and, why the clients kind of go back a little bit. Okay. Like doubling it is because my, I do want a couple of agents by the end of. Can you ever see yourself not making six figures ever again? You know what I mean? Like looking at. Uh, no, not really. I, I just don't see how it would go down, you know, in insurance. I don't see how it goes down, to be honest with you. You've got your renewals and then whatever you sell on top of that or Correct. the more that you get. And I just don't see that, you know, I don't see it going downhill. Yeah. And Ty has a really good back, back end system in place. So I rule We don't even, we haven't talked about it, but chargebacks and stuff when you, when yep. you're in this business starting out, um, I've not had much problem with that at all. That's good. I think I had seven this whole year. So. Wow. Five of those were deaths of just the LIS, LIS Medicare. So And you can't control those. No. So yeah. Um, so we have a really good back end thing in place. Again, that's my mentor though, doing Correct. that for me. You know, well, not right. for me, but teaching me how to do it myself. Yeah. And uh, so that that's gonna be a big ish, big deal for some people too starting out. It's huge. What do you do on the back end? So what do you what 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 do you notice as um other agents that come into the business struggle with the most? that you feel like you've improved at a lot personally. That would, that's going to be consistency. Yeah. Just like the first thing that okay. pops in my mind. Okay. Yeah. 
I've seen we I've seen other LOAs that we've got and different activity and consistency. Yep. How do you ramp up? How do you stay consistent while doing more and being better? Do you think it's like, do you think like I always talk about how routine equals habits, habits equals discipline, discipline equals success, right? Like, mm -hmm. do you feel like your routine and your planning and reading and that kind of stuff, like from a routine standpoint, do you feel like you could improve there? Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. For sure. What do you think you should do better there? Uh, definitely. I want to definitely pick up a couple more books okay. than I did last year. Good. You know, There's routine here. Just kidding. Right. Yeah. I just pull one out of this office and I'd yeah. be, I would be good to go for at least two months and get a couple here. Um, and then I've been like routine wise, I working out every morning, you yep. know, I'm starting to work out uh, more this year in 2022 already than last year. You Zeb, know. Zeb's going to get sexier in 2022. I, I guess. That's, Coming. Th that's kind of the goal, I guess. But um, the books piece is good, man. So I've started um, planning. So mm -hmm. I've started spending about 30 minutes every night and every morning where I'm reading and planning out my day. Yes. And it's really helped a lot. Like that's, I'm, I'm, I'm feel like my, I'm a very disciplined person, but there's still another level, you know? I, I completely agree with that. There, uh, if there's, I don't know how many people say it, but you never stop growing. Correct. You know, if you stop, right. then you're just going backwards. Yes. So, yes. Um, there's definitely a lot to learn in that. Good. And I'm super young. So that, you know, true mistakes will come. Missteps will come, but uh, yep. I'm ready for the journey for sure. Dude. I love it. Excited. I love it. Um, what would you like? Is there anything you would like to add that you haven't mentioned so far? Uh, I don't know. Not, I mean, not really. I would okay. say to be successful in this though, which yep. I have seen from the LOA standpoint of even with people who aren't even spending their own money for marketing dollars. Is it really insurance to me is not super hard just the way I grew up. Um, but it is hard because you, when you're your own boss and you're, yes. you're the one pulling yourself out of that bed sometimes. Yes. Um, but I would just say activity, man. No, no one does enough activity, Correct. not even myself. No, people like, don't. It's crazy. Yeah. No one does enough activity. I would say if people were more just consistent in activity, yeah. especially new agents, they would see the success, but true i think people just give up too soon yeah and so i well i would say that dude kudos to you and all your success okay if you guys want to look up zeb follow his journey on facebook you can look up z-e-b-z-i-n-n -N. yep okay zeb zen dude appreciate your time yes, sir. congrats Thank on you. winning last year local loa champ and being a rising star appreciate it okay give it up for zeb unbelievable podcast love this dude he's crushing it he's killing it you gonna be a part of rising star you think you're a rising star you want to sit here and do this with me and you want to be better at what you're doing and improve, go to CodyAskins.com forward slash Rising Star. And thanks for listening to Rising Star Podcast. We'll see you every Friday day for the next one. If you love this video, you know I got another one that you're going to love. I got a video just to your right, right here. Click on that. It's going to be amazing. You're going to love it. And I'll see you in there. I've got a new top 10 quit list that I'm going to share with you right now. I'm telling you, there are 10 things that you may or may not be doing, but you got to quit doing these things immediately. I'm telling you.